Hi, I'm Stu Baca, and I'm a Gen X grown-up, and I support Gen X grown-up on Patreon, and you should too at patreon.com slash Gen X grown-up. Gen X Grown Up is a YouTube channel website and audio podcast you're listening to right now. All made for and by people who love exploring media, games, tech, and toys of yesterday and today through the eyes of Gen Xers who refuse to grow up. Your dinner cannot just be french fries. Basically, life sucks as a grown up. Welcome back, Gen X Grown Up podcast listeners to this backtrack edition of the Gen X Grown Up podcast. I'm John. Joining me as always is Mo. Hey, everybody. And George is here. Hey, how's it going, guys? Here are a few quotes for you. Nobody puts baby in a corner. Bubble, bubble, toil and trouble. Beam me up, Scotty. What do these all have in common? Well, they're iconic quotes from our Gen X childhood and also... Yeah, they're awesome. They were never said. Completely oh. misquoted. Oh, really? Ah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to look at some Gen X pop culture quotes that we all get wrong and we can all enjoy being wrong together. <laughs> <laughs> this entire backtrack was inspired by Mail We Got Back from the back track we did about Gen X pop culture catchphrases. You remember that one, I'm sure, right? Oh yeah. oh, yeah. Absolutely. A healthy portion of the mail we got back on that was people upset over one quote that we misquoted, and it was absolutely related to Star Wars, and we will get to that in a bit. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> Ooh, that's kind of embarrassing. But in reading that email, we were talking and said, you know, Star Wars is not the only culprit. I mean, there are so many quotes out there growing up that we all just say, movies and TV shows or just general pop culture that we use all the time, and turns out we're dead wrong on them and they were never said at all. So we're going to run through those. Or misquoting, right? Misquoting, yeah. We, we think we're doing it right. Yeah. <laughs> but we sure we felt, or not. We felt like we were smart, I guess. I'm actually going to sprinkle some of the email throughout this episode instead of front-loading it all. I'm going to start, though, with an email from Stu Monkey who wrote in hmm. and he said, Yo, John, can't believe y'all omitted Bill and Ted from catchphrases from this Ooh, latest backtrack. Big <laughs> miss. Big miss. I seriously learned most of my vocabulary from that movie growing up. <laughs> And he lists some examples like, strange things are afoot at the Circle K. And all we are is dust in the wind, dude. Ted, you and I have witnessed many things, but nothing as bodacious as what just happened. I mean, so many great things in there. He says, I still use put them in the Iron Maiden all the time because I was a metalhead growing up, so it's fitting. <laughs> I'm with you. I get it. I don't know why we didn't include any Bill and Ted. I don't know. So quotable. Hey, it's right at the end of the decade. It came out in 89, so maybe it didn't pop up in a lot of our searches when we were looking for stuff because we were looking for a lot of 70s and mid to early 80s. So maybe that's why. Or we just all forgot. Like or we idiots. screwed up. Yeah. Well, a valid defense. Either yeah, I mean, we yep. had a ton of stuff to go through. Right, there was no shortage. Yeah. Fair point. Oh, yep. for sure. Stu Monkey wraps up by saying, by the way, can't wait for the new movie, Face the Music, to come oh, out I in know. August. We mm. hope it's August. We'll probably yeah, we'll see. We'll, see. we'll find out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, even without Rufus. That's oh, sad. Pour one out for Rufus. Yeah. <laughs> what a great part of those films. Uh, he wraps up by saying, great work. You could certainly find enough material to do a part two of this one. Ha yeah. <laughs> ha I guess. Look where we are now. <laughs> May the fourth Fourth listener, be with you, Stu Monkey. Hey, Stu Monkey, so, thank yeah, you. Yeah, from emails just like yours, Stu Monkey, you inspired us to absolutely do a part two. We're going to take all of those misremembered, misquoted pop culture quotes, and we're going to line them up for you and give you the correct version. <laughs> all that's coming up right now. Excellent! 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 Iron Maiden? Excellent! So many emails came in about this one misremembered quote that we use in our catchphrase backtrack. And it was all around Star Wars, as I mentioned. Oh, and so it's all about I know, right? I mean, we're Star Wars nerds, we're Gen X nerds, and we got this wrong. The, the quote that we did was George was the one reading at the time, the, the quiz, and he said, May the force be with you. And we answered and we got the answers right or wrong, whatever we did, and we moved on with our lives. But that's not how the fourth list <laughs> was heard. Yeah. <laughs> so the first one I want to read directly about that comes from Scott. And Scott writes in and says, I don't like calling people out. Okay, maybe I like calling people out who believe they're infallible. But when you <laughs> get your Star Wars facts wrong. Is he lumping us into that category? I I, I think we're getting lumped. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm pretty I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> but when you get your facts wrong to a Gen X audience, well, that's like messing up at the Apollo. You will hear about it. Yes, it's true. <laughs> so Scott says, in your Gen X pop culture catchphrases episode, George asked everyone who said, may the force be with you. It was incorrectly guessed and incorrectly affirmed oh that it was Obi-Wan Kenobi. However, contrary to popular belief, he never said that. 
He said, the force will be with you always. Always, yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you're right. I, okay, I, there's no, so there's, no there's an extra word at the end of it. I mean, it's not that he didn't say those words, just well, it's not the whole you, quote. You can't say any words in any order and say you've said everything. <laughs> you're, you're not, that's not how you okay, have to no, actually that say is, it in that order. No, that's not wrong, because think about it. I, I'm not trying to give his entire dialogue for the entire film, so I can't quote every word he said. <sighs> But, but the he thing didn't is that, say, may the force may be the with force you be with and you. the force will be with will you be always. With you. It's, it's really two separate. It, he's saying it, it's two separate ways of like that. I think they're saying it differently. Reality is how much I might agree with you, George. The fact is we got it it's wrong. not an accurate quote to people who know the right one. So right. it's hard they to defend. couldn't see me saying the dot, dot, dot part. That's <laughs> If you had said the dot, dot, problem <laughs> Then I could have gotten away with it. <laughs> you know, Scott goes on to mention that the two people who do actually say that in the movie are General Dodonna to uh-huh. the rebel pilots. To the rebel pilots when they go up to attack yeah and the other person to say it was han freaking solo may the force be with you all right that's right he does say that yeah that's right he does it's one of those collectively misremembered misattributed quotes like darth vader never saying luke i'm your father he says no i am your father right yeah so he's right and there's so many more of them that's why it inspired us to do this backtrack scott says regardless of how blatantly wrong george is in this instance (laughs) i enjoy your show wow keep it up scott i'm not a fan of scott's anymore Damn it. <laughs> I am. I'm totally in Scott's corner. Of course you're a fan of I Scott. I feel feelings Scott mutual, now. maybe. So yeah, Scott feels the same way. It's all right. <laughs> Thank you for the email, Scott. Even though George is not a huge fan of yours, it's okay. <laughs> we are. <laughs> we Thank you for writing in. And it helped us inspire to get this uh, ball rolling. And we have actually lined up lots of these misremembered, misquoted things. Mo, why don't you get the ball rolling with a great quote from our Gen X era? Oh, sure. I mean, everybody knows this one, right? Nobody puts baby in the corner. Dirty Um, dancing, of course. um, Actually, Mm? it's nobody puts baby in a corner. In a corner? If Scott's going to call me out, I'm calling (laughs) no out. Damn it. It's not the corner. It's a corner because it can be any corner in that damn resort. Nobody puts baby in a corner. You couldn't hear Mo do the dot, dot, dot. Otherwise, yeah, there's a dot, dot, dot there somewhere, right? Yeah, all right, all right, yeah all right. we all got that one wrong. Technically, it's wrong. Right, but I've got one. another one that I know is actually correct. Just okay. like my Star Wars quote, I still stand by the one that one's correct. I don't care what Scott says. Anyway. <laughs> Poor Scott. <laughs> from Jaws, the quote is, we're going to need a bigger boat. Um, Turns out you're not quite right there. What? What? Don't the tell me that. The line in Jaws is, you're going to need a bigger oh, boat. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Oh, that's right. He's now talking singular to singular versus collective. Come on. It's well, it's true. It's a fact. I mean, if you're going to be right, you got to be right. We've yeah, been, there are so fine, many that we've gotten just fine. a little wrong. We adapt them and paraphrase <laughs> them. <laughs> so what about this one? This one for sure. Everyone has heard. And I think we're good with, which is yeah. mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the fairest of them all? From Snow White, the ooh, Seven Dwarfs. Ooh, ooh close. You're what? close. It's not what right, you know, though. Close. I said right, a million right. times. No, 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 no. It's not mirror, mirror. It's magic mirror on the wall. Who's the fairest of them all? Uh, uh, from Snow White, from right? Snow White, Snow White and true. Seven Dwarfs. Yeah, yep. yeah. So it's not mirror, mirror. It's magic mirror. Now it's Snow White and the Seven Misremembered Quotes, apparently, is the new <laughs> title of the film. You know, during the tiebreaker of that first episode, we did Dirty Harry quotes, George. Oh, yeah. We did, great. yeah. And so we also did, do you feel lucky, punk? Oh, yeah. Uh, now that one, to say it one right, you got to kind of have the whole, you got to put it in context, okay? Okay. So one, context. it's not, do you feel lucky, punk? It's being as this is a forty-four Magnum, the most powerful handgun in the world, and will blow your head <laughs> clean <laughs> off. You got to ask yourself one question. Do I feel lucky? Well, do you? Punk. Oh. No, you got to ask yourself another question. Do I do a shitty, dirty, hairy impression? Oh, that's I know right. that's, 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 yes. <laughs> yes, that's absolutely yes. That's for sure. That wasn't that misremembered. That is accurate. But okay, so it's do I feel so lucky? So it's not do you feel it's lucky? It's not do you feel lucky, punk? It's like, do I feel lucky? Well, do you, punk? Do I feel lucky? Well, do you, punk? Yeah. Mm. You know, I actually remember it the way you're saying it correctly now. Do I feel yeah. Rather than what we tried to pass off as the correct <laughs> the quote. Right thing. <laughs> but on the schoolyard, you, you point your handgun at somebody and you're like, do you feel lucky, punk? That's that's what you want to say, right? Yeah. Do you feel lucky? Let's go it. back to a classic then. This is a little bit before Generation X era, I would say, but it's still a classic film. Oh, yeah. It's a quote that everybody knows. Play it again, Sam. I mean, yeah, that's of course. pretty straightforward, that's like the, right? That's, that, that well, definitely Well, it's not exactly. Seriously? Oh. <laughs> not, not precisely. 
actually in Casablanca, the quote is, play it, Sam. Play as time goes by. They don't actually say, play it again, Sam. Really? We say that all the time. What? Yeah. Now, later in the film, they do say, you played it for her. You can play it for me. If she can stand it, I can. Play it. So there are a couple of times where they talk about playing the piano and playing the music, but never did they say, play it again, Sam. Never happened. Hmm, Sorry. Well, why would that happen? Because that is such a common, everybody knows that as a quote. You go far enough down the rabbit hole and you don't go back and check the source material. You just heard it said over and over, I guess, okay. right? All right. Yeah. Okay. So let's do The Wizard of Oz. That's another old one, but this is a quote I've used a billion sure. times, which is, Got it. I don't think we're in Kansas anymore, Toto. Right. Of um, course. Yeah, hold um, on. Um, <laughs> um, actually, it's Toto. I have a feeling we're not in Kansas anymore. So oh. the dog comes first before the quote, apparently. And from the apparently real she film. has a feeling, not a thinking. And it has a contraction. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. so pedantic, but it's wrong. Okay. Here's one, George, you will certainly enjoy field of dreams oh yeah if you course. build it they will come oh that's no. perfect yeah. it no. said over no. and over I'm I'm right it. Now, they wrong. will come right? no yeah. no 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 because it's not a they who is coming it is shoeless joe jackson so it's if you build it, he will come. And it also doubles because it's, if you build it, he will come talking about the main character, Kevin Costner's father coming back to visit him, oh. who just recently died. So it's not Ooh. they, it's not a group of the Chicago Black Sox. It's he will come. Huh. Okay. I'm going to have to watch that movie someday. <laughs> <laughs> you put it in your Goonies lineup, damn it. Uh, you haven't watched Field of Dreams. Bigger, what the hell's wrong with you? It's a baseball movie. What do you want from me? Oh, I, I want you to it. watch it. That's what I want from okay. you. Okay. Yeah, I should. It seems All right. people they speak highly of it. It sounds good. So, okay. How about this one? This is from The Graduate, right? Mrs. Robinson, are you trying to seduce me? Dustin Hoffman, classic quote. Yeah, but that's not exactly what he says. Oh, really? No, no. The line is, Mrs. Robinson, you're trying to seduce me, aren't you? Oh. Really? That's Star Wars logic. All the words are there, but you got them out of order. You're just used to hearing it that one way over and over. Yeah, you're right. And over. We are. Huh. Now, one that you know for sure that is always right is Forrest Gump, one of the most quotable oh. films. <laughs> That's, right. Yeah. Tons of great quotes. Of that. I know where you're going for that one. Though, okay. Yeah. It's the chocolates, right? Yeah. My mama always said life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. Uh, <laughs> get. So apparently I'm going to become the um actually asshole with this phrase because that's not correct either. What? But I knew. No. Okay. It's got to be close. It's close. I'll give you okay. that. Okay. My mama always said life was like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. That's so close. Yep. <laughs> that's so close. Life is like a bunch. Instead of life is, it's life, life was. was. Uh, life was. Uh, yeah. Was like yeah, a box so of I feel like I should call shenanigans on that one. It's so close. It's so close. Well, and you know, it's close. And I think actually the writers of the film probably got it wrong because he's, how's he talking about that a quote That's from right. a yep. past present's life circumstance? That doesn't mm -hmm. make any sense. It should be life is. Because we internalize the story, map it onto the quote. Yeah. That's what we hear. And that's what we remember. That, that's probably true of most of these. You know, we've actually <laughs> touched on a few like Casablanca and whatever that you said, Mo, they predate Gen X, but uh -huh. they were quotes that we used growing up as Generation Xers. So many of them come, they predate our 70s, 80s era. Sure. Yeah, sure. And there's so many fun ones, so I wasn't going to leave them out. So we have to. For example, one that you always, I they'll play around all the time when you're playing Tarzan, right? Oh, the original Tarzan. He says, me Tarzan, you Jane. And that's how you talk to people in the playground. <laughs> yeah, but that's not the quote though. Actually, that quote never occurred anywhere in any of the movies, as far as I know. <sighs> All so, he kept saying was like, all I remember the quotes being is like, Jane, Tarzan, Jane, Tarzan. He's pointing, right? Yeah. He's pointing. Jane, Tarzan, forever. But doesn't he later go, me, Tarzan, you? I no. guess not. Well, no. I'll no. tell you somebody that does say that quote, that quote is actually misused then in Empire Records. There's a line where one of the characters is making fun of two of the other yeah. characters falling they in love. They misquoted like, too. It's not me, just Tarzan, us. Tarzan, you, Jane. So it's, <laughs> it's misquoted in another film even. That's how much everybody is sure that's the way that that one goes. We're not alone. No, no, no. <laughs> what about one of the Quintus essential 80s films of all time Wall Street. Greed is oh, good. Oh, yeah. Gecko. Right? Yeah. Gordon Gecko. Gecko, Greed is good. Oh, yeah. That's a, that's a perfect quote. Simple. Yeah. Three words. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, it, it, it turns out you've misremembered the quote. What? I'm sorry. No. So Gordon Gecko never says greed is good. I'm sorry. Are you sure yeah, about that? Yeah, of course he does. It's no, that, it's, no. It's, it's he's in that room. He's, he's giving, giving the speech, speech to the he? people yeah. who yeah, he's yeah. trying to take over their company. I think it's very much like Forrest Gump, right? You remember it by mapping the movie onto it, but the quote is, the point is, ladies and gentlemen, that greed, for lack of a better word, is good. Greed is right. Greed works. 
Okay, so we just shortened his phrase because he was too goddamn long-winded. That's all we did. Then you're not quoting, you're paraphrasing. Uh, very different. <laughs> that is very not different, then, is it? <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. Now, one that we can all agree on, I think, is from Cool Hand Luke. Oh, great. What movie. we have here is a failure to oh, communicate. Oh, the sheriff, oh, right? Uh, uh, you're Ma- close. Maybe my dad's favorite quote of all time. You were close. Is my dad wrong, too? Oh, I'm about to say, <laughs> I don't know. Your dad maybe said, right, you just misremembered it. You may have misquoted people twice in a row. Yeah. He says, <laughs> what we've got here. Here is a failure to communicate. Oh, it's what we've have. got. Not, not what we have. It's what we've got here is a failure to communicate. It, it, it's a borderline punctuation problem. Yeah. It's just a <laughs> little bit different. It was funny with the guy who did that line was hosting Saturday Night Live way back in the oh. day. And they did a, a thing with that where he was teaching a Spanish immersion course. Okay. And so he says, what we've got here is a failure to communicate bilingually. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> also, never said in the film. Never said that in the movie. Nope, nope, nope. Okay, one of the most famous quotes of all time, because it's not only a film quote, it's an actual real life quote. All right. Okay. What about Apollo 13? Oh, yeah. Houston, we have a problem. There's no yeah. way that that can be incorrect. That's straight from Isn't the transcripts. Like the, the poster. Doesn't that say it on the poster or something? It's from the transcripts from Houston, you know, NASA. Yeah. I mean, well, you might think so, but that's not oh, what was said in the film. Up. Oh, really? really? Actually, what he says is, uh, Houston, we've had a problem. You know, I don't believe that we've one. Had. I'm sorry. It's, past I don't, it's that's there. Not, that it's can't be right. Past. The fourth <laughs> listener is going to write in and correct you if you say it wrong again. So well, just, uh, you know, accept. Scott might as well get his little email pen out and start writing start because write damn it there's email no pen? way what? I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> there's an email pen isn't there <laughs> just like you still have the floppy disk for save there's a writing his little pen in the corner it's the icon of course <laughs> oh, we're not done we have a lot more of these misremembered quotes maybe we should be done <laughs> <laughs> stick around we'll be right back I know what you're thinking did he fire six shots or only five well, to tell you the truth in all this excitement, I've kind of lost track myself. But Ian, this is a 44 Magnum, the most powerful handgun in the world, and would blow your head clean off. You've got to ask yourself one question. Do I feel lucky? Well, do you, punk? This next batch of misremembered, misquoted things come kind of from kind of news and literature and what happened in the real world that we all quote over and over and over. Before we get into a batch of those, though, I want to read another email. Oh, yay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, from Sparks821. All right. One of our friends over on Discord. We've played games together. Yeah. Here's what Sparks had to say. Here we go. Let me guess. No, 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 no. <laughs> George, you are wrong. <laughs> oh, Lord. Referring to the Star Wars oh. quote, may the force be with you. Obi-Wan never uttered these words in the original trilogy. He did say, remember, the force will be with you always after the destruction of the Death Star to Luke. <laughs> the general was the first to say these words before the Battle of Yavin to the rebels, as Woof. well as Han to Luke. Exactly what Scott told us. Yeah. Woof. I'm really not enjoying this segment anymore. <laughs> I'm on Sparks team too now. I got a couple team. I'm building a whole cadre of people here. Of course here you behind. are, super Star Wars geek guy. <laughs> and maybe my favorite salutation of this show, Sparks winds it up by saying, may the fact check be with you, Sparks 821. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. Yeah, yeah. There's a couple. So brace yourself. There are a few more of these, George. Hang in there. Oh, yay. <laughs> Something to look forward to. You know, and we were just talking about Apollo 13, the film, yeah. but but there's some stuff that comes out of the real Apollo 13 disaster. Well, yeah, I mean, I guess there's the one quote that we all kind of think we remember, which is failure is not an option. That's a phrase that is used a million times in today's society, especially in business or people yeah. who invent things or stuff. And mm-hmm. it's not that it's not a great quote. Which you got to think about it. Failure is always an option, right? <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> stupid for one thing, right? But, it, but it's a great motivational quote. Oh, it so is. it's not oh, that yeah. it's not yeah. a good phrase. It's just that it didn't get said in the context that we all associate it with, which is the Apollo 13 crew trying to get back to Earth. Nobody Mm -hmm. on the Apollo 13 crew ever actually said the line. It's just after the whole thing was said and done, it became a thing, a culture, so to speak, at NASA, because Mm -hmm. the whole point was to bring everyone home safely. Yeah, it became like this mantra that was attached to Apollo 13 for sure, but never said in the context of the actual disaster. Yep. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. One that people use all all the time, which is the ends justify the means, right? Everyone sure. uses yes. that. Yeah, that's use all, that of course. Time. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's like a yeah. Machiavelli kind of thing, I think, is from you know that time period in Italy. That's what's allowed mm-hmm. me to make so much money in businesses over the years. <laughs> 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 Whatever I do, as long as I get paid. Yeah. Doing a little research, it turns out that the actual quote is, one must consider the final result, which... 
Eh, it doesn't really roll off the tongue as no, well. No, it doesn't. Uh, yeah, I don't <laughs> yeah. like that one at all. That's the real quote? One must consider the final result. I think Machiavelli should have just said the correct one. But that's like the opposite meaning, though. The ends justify the means means however you get there, whatever you did doesn't matter. One must consider the final result. Uh, Which means well, that whatever you're doing same. now, it doesn't really matter, I guess. You know? it, wow, it's, that's it's just a weird thing. way to say it. Machiavelli sucked as a writer. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> See, I think the first one is more of a uh, millennial kind of sh- make get right to the point thing, right? Is that like a <laughs> translation thing because he was Italian and wrote it, it in Italian too. and it got translated a different way, I wonder? Maybe, huh, but it, it doesn't even feel like it would map directly. It's almost like it's just a reinterpretation. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, another one we all hear actually came from the Bible. Money is the root of all evil. I've used mm. it many times oh, yeah. myself. Sure. It, it turns out that doesn't say that in the Bible. The actual not quote exactly, is, yeah. the love of money is the root of all evil. Oh, so, so not money, money itself, itself is the, the love, love of it. Oh, yeah. well, that's, a, that's a distinction. Yeah. So I'm evil because I freaking love money. Yeah, it's one of those <laughs> idolization before God type of quotes, the way it's used in the Bible. So it's don't put anything above God. Don't put love of money Got above it. God. So love of money, the love of money. Right. Yeah, uh, that yeah okay. Of that makes more sense. Yeah. yeah. What about Dracula? Oh, yeah. Everybody says, I want to suck your blood. Yeah. And this one, I don't, I'm not a big fan of saying this is a wrong quote because there never was a fucking Dracula to begin with. <laughs> well, but in literature. Novel, in the literature, literature in the, in the Dracula book. never right. said this in Bram Stoker's Dracula, apparently. Yeah. So, and why would you? Because you're giving away the fact that you're a vampire. You know, true. Yeah, yeah. It's like you walk in a room and go, "I want to steal your purse." Well, you kind of given yourself away. <laughs> you're probably not going to get a purse now, so you probably shouldn't say that. He's a polite bloodsucker. <laughs> yeah. That's all. He's not one to be rude. This is Victorian society. Era, Pardon you me. Know? Do you have any gray poupon and blood? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> begging your pardon. I would like to bite your neck. Yeah, would no. you? just say bite your neck oh bite your neck okay the neck. accent neck. threw that off to something else it was your filthy mind it made you think of something else <laughs> <laughs> oh that's a, let's move on let's move on all right let's stick with the monster theme <laughs> okay when I, I heard all the time and it's like you see when people create something that makes it they quote frankenstein which is he's alive oh, he's alive he's of alive. course right, right. <sighs> yep like yeah, hitting sure. all that stuff right of course but the actual yep. quote is it's alive he doesn't refer to uh, it as a he yeah. it's an object oh, no yeah. gender okay yeah so it's alive, which actually makes more sense. Or on the topic of Frankenstein, can we, by the way, can we correct the fact that Frankenstein is the man, Frankenstein's monster? Oh, yeah, of course. Monster, of course. Sure. So, yeah, I mean, I mean th- that's I not hope a, quote, a lot of people know that. It's now. freaking wrong. And people say, oh, here comes Frankenstein. No, <laughs> no he's back at home. That's his monster. It's a different yes. guy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he's in a different kind of rubber suit. Yes. He, he, woo. What? <laughs> Anywho, <laughs> something about this accent really messed up your mind. <laughs> what about some Shakespearean stuff? We talk about literature. Oh, you want to sound smart? Yeah. This is not a lesson on Shakespeare, but there's some that has actually permeated all of pop culture. So what about Bubble Bubble Toil and Trouble? Sure. Right? That's so the witches, right? Right. Yeah, the he would roll thing, over right? in his grave. It was never Bubble Bubble. It was Double Double Toil and Trouble. Really? But people huh. hear that and probably have never read the play yeah. at all. So it's from Macbeth and it's the witches and they're all around the That's cauldron. That's from Macbeth? Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The witches yeah. around the cauldron and they're making this, uh, casting the, the spells and, and it's just Double oh, Double. Harry Potter. Toil- Potter even got that wrong. That line is used in one of the songs at the beginning of the third film. So here's the thing. Harry Potter is probably not culturally <laughs> accurate. <laughs> also, fiction. I don't know if you know. Fiction. Oh, they not might have gotten it right, though. I don't know. I could be misquoting them for all I know. They could have gotten it right. Don't they have a whole town in Orlando? I mean, Harry Potter is not real, isn't it? They I mean, do have okay, a whole town there. That's real, but it's okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll explain it to you later. All right, all right. So what about another one of my money quotes then What from Shakespeare? All that glitters is not gold. This is from the Merchant I know, of Venice. I was Venice, so stunned right? to hear that yeah. wasn't right. But it's not. It's all that glisters is not gold. There's no mention Glister. of glistening or glittering. It's glisters. Uh, so, you know, whatever the hell Smash Mouth was thinking about, they weren't reading Shakespeare, apparently, when they came up with their song. I, I feel stupid. I have to ask a question. What the hell does glisters mean? <laughs> I don't know. I'm just reading the shit that John wrote. You would think it's a typo. <laughs> like, oh, like you meant to type glistens. But no, it absolutely is. All that glisters is not or gold. glitters or blisters i don't know <laughs> it's got to be one of the like root words that glitter came out of or sure. something but you, you would never heard anybody say that oh that's so glistery but yeah right. okay. <laughs> freaking shakespeare so here's this next one i think most people now realize that this one probably isn't true but just to clarify for the younger generation that probably hasn't read this, I cannot tell a lie. 
which is about you know the whole George Washington cutting down the tree, yeah, yeah. cut down the tree. Stuff. Sure. You know why that permeated for so long? Because our damn history teachers kept trying to teach that to they us. Tell in us. Class. Yeah. yeah. Actually, it was like yeah, a biographer actually created this fake story, and it just sort of went true for a really long time until somebody said, "Yo, yeah, of course you want to elevate George Washington, the father of our country, sure. and the first president, and all that stuff." About, and so, yeah, yeah, so yeah. you start making tall tales about him. Like what else? So somebody also have told a... a lie that said he can't tell a lie. Yeah, yeah exactly. Right. <laughs> Hmm. Huh. What's wrong with this picture? It's a little more literature. Mark Twain, one of oh, just an amazing author. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And so one you've heard quite a bit. I'm sure you find out you know a project's been shut down or whatever, and it's not. And people go, reports of my death have been greatly exaggerated. Oh yeah. Attributed oh, sure, to yeah. Mark Twain. Yeah yeah. Yeah. People say it was because it, his death was rumored at the New York Journal and. It, he came back and said, hey, by the way, you're wrong. But he never actually said that. What he said, close, the report of my death was an exaggeration. Mm, okay. So he was actually was saying that in response to someone thinking he was dead. He was. He absolutely was. Okay. You know, oddly, the misquote sounds more Mark Twain-y than what right. Mark Twain actually that's said. That's what I was it? thinking. I was, <laughs> yeah. I was thinking that somebody must have read that quote or heard him say it and said, that's not Mark Twain enough. I need to goose this up a little bit to get people <laughs> to right. believe if he Twain-y. really said it. <laughs> let's, yeah. let's Mark Twain it up a little. Not <laughs> Yeah, so. <laughs> Turn up to 11 yep. on the 20th factor. <laughs> is, is that a thing? I'm right. sure it is. I mean, it is so, you know, there's a lot of philosophers that get quoted all the time, right? So what about yeah. this quote? The journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. Oh, sure. I mean, that's oh, a great yeah. quote. Yeah. Makes you feel good. It's like, okay. That's Confucius. I just got to do it? one thing. Right. You know, so it's not really Confucius, nor is it correct. It's actually what? Lao Tzu. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. And You're wrong twice. The quote is a journey of 400 miles begins beneath one's feet. So okay, well, fewer miles. I don't know so what the significance far. of 400 is. Maybe that's the size of the Great Wall of China or something. It's got to be the distance no. between two important cities in Lao right. Tzu's world. It's, 400 uh, miles imagine. walking is a long freaking way. Well, and I'm just really confused because I didn't know <laughs> that they used the imperial system for measurement in China. I thought <laughs> for sure they would have used the metric system. But a, a journey of 400 cubits begins i don't know what i'm sure it was something else yeah i think one quote which is totally appropriate to this entire podcast we're doing <laughs> which is a little knowledge is a dangerous thing <laughs> right we have very little knowledge and that seems to have been very dangerous hazardous but actually this is a quote from alexander pope and the original statement is a little learning is a dangerous thing mm. yeah, that, that maps pretty well it like, does yeah, map pretty well paraphrased it, it's funny though i think a little learning though is actually a little nuanced there but i kind of like that one a little better it does sound better a little learning is a dangerous thing it's hard to get the, the misquoted quote out of your head though when you hear something I know. that does oh, sound know. good you're like oh god that sounds awful to my ear because you're so used to the one that's everybody knows even though like you said Mo the one that people don't know is actually sounds better yeah it's like that problem I have with Weird Al Yankovic's Yoda because I heard it before I heard Lola and now <laughs> I can't hear Lola properly right. <laughs> yeah you yeah. can't undo it so Marie Antoinette had a fantastic quote that I'm sure you all know which is let them eat cake. Yeah, it was so fantastic. They cut off her head. <laughs> well, that's, that, I don't think that's why, but yes. I, it has some, I think it has some, if someone said that to me, I, you know. Yep. Turns out Marie Antoinette never said that. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh. That's actually credited to a French philosopher named Jean-Jacques Rousseau. Okay. Further... He wasn't even talking about Marie Antoinette or cake. He wrote, let them eat brioche. Mm, well, okay. of course. Yeah. It's not Marie. It's not talking about her. It's not her that said it. It's not even cake. <laughs> the only part is let them eat. That's just wrong on let them so eat. many fronts. <laughs> Doesn't work. Doesn't fit. Oh, well, we've been wrong all this time. Well, I mean, you know, there's a lot of great quotes out there. What about well-behaved women rarely make history? Marilyn Monroe. I think that's an awesome quote. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, great. So Marilyn Monroe did not say that at all. That's sad. No. Really? Actually, I thought it was like Rosalind Russell who might have said that also. But. No, it was a University of New Hampshire student named Laurel Thatcher Ulrich. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, went on to become a Harvard professor. That person should get the credit, apparently, for that phrase, Absolutely. not Marilyn Monroe. Ulrich? It's a That's great, great quote, quote, though. quote, It is a great quote. It's a great quote, quote but yeah, if you're going to make a quote popular, and... you know, you're going to attribute least, it to somebody yeah. who is well-known in the pop culture. That's Marilyn Monroe, obviously, true. much more well-known than Laurel Thatcher Ulrich. Yep. Facts. Wow. You're right. <laughs> Speaking of Marilyn Monroe, how about this one? If you can't handle me at my worst, you don't deserve me at my best. Deserve me at my best. You know? Yep. Mm. Is that also not her? Uh, yeah. No one could prove that she said that at all. <sighs> wow. There's no record anywhere, any place of her. And they're actually not sure where it came from. There's a lot of people that quote could apply to right now in today's society. I know. Society, yeah. though. And that's another kind of female empowerment kind of thing. You yeah. know, it's like you take care of me no matter what. It's not just for better, for worse kind of thing. And it's that it makes me sad that she didn't say that because I always envisioned her saying that. So I know. <laughs> 
she could say it. She could have said that. We're not quite done. Coming up next, we have some TV show misquotes oh, that I'm guessing that most of you will get wrong just like we did. <laughs> <laughs> Merchant of Venice, Act 2, Scene 7. The Prince of Morocco pulls a scroll from the eye of a skull and reads, All that glisters is not gold. Often have you heard that told. Finally, we're getting into some TV show quotes that are not correct, misquoted. Before we do, I have one more fourth listener email. This one comes from Mike C. <laughs> one more? Okay. Still? They just keep coming. They keep oh, coming. It's not about George, though, right? Uh, let's see. Mike yeah. says, this whole George is right thing. <laughs> 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 wow, so it no turns out it is. No burying the lead there, is it? Turns out it is, yeah. So he says, bullet point A. Oh my God, bullet points. Okay, so he might be right sometimes. Okay. But anytime you guys say or read a letter saying he's right, he hears George is right all the time. How does this Mike C <laughs> guy know what I hear? That's what, it's, true, it's right? his assessment. He's a fourth yeah. listener. Of course, yeah. you will not be able to say that on the podcast because he'll hear you say George is right all the time. Uh, uh, bullet point B. <laughs> For those of you who wish to support the George is Right movement, perhaps you could set up an email for the podcast, like George is Right at GenXGrownUp.com. For those in the other camp, George is Wrong at GenXGrownUp.com. <laughs> then you could just delete all the George is Right emails by mistake, of course. Wow. <laughs> wow. Oh, let me get those set up right quick. Mike C and I have got to have some words, right or wrong. Some words? We're going to have some words. Well, Mike Mike is one of our patrons, so we love yeah, him very yeah. much, so don't punch him no. too many times. I mean, well, you know, yeah. how much of a patron is he? <laughs> Doesn't I'm matter. Doesn't wonder. matter. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Can we make up the deficit if George makes him mad? We'll see. <laughs> he does, though, go on to say, George, by the way, you should try to find an old card catalog case for your son's magic cards, just like the ones we talked about in the Dewey Decimal podcast. Ah. Uh. Okay. Oh, okay. I mean, I already bought him a cardboard thing, so I'm kind of stuck with that. But it would be a nice visual to have like a Dewey Decimal the cal- card catalog. Just, the, the that would be pretty cool. Slide out. Yeah, I bet they would fit really in well in there. I didn't even punch think a about the, the bottom of them. That I'm not bad. punching <laughs> a hole in the bottom of them. I'll get killed. <laughs> Mike wraps it up and says, "You know, all you guys are great. I appreciate all the work that you do. Forever fourth, Mike C. Oh, oh, thanks, apparently, Mike. not all of us are great. <laughs> <laughs> You're great. You're just wrong at it. You're great. Yeah. You're fantastically incorrect. Nobody <laughs> is wrong as good as you, George. Wow. You know what? Do something and do it better than anybody else. That's right. Okay. Buy one thing and stick with it. <laughs> we appreciate everyone who wrote in from uh, Scott and Stu Monkey and Mike C and Sparks, all you guys. If you'd like to have your email on the show, you know you can hit us up at podcast at genxgrownup.com. We read them all and eventually they make their way into a show and we make George listen to them if it's very <laughs> critical of him. <laughs> but we promised we had some TV show misquotes, misremembered quotes, and uh, we're going to do those right now. The first one is... Is I love Lucy. Oh. And this is Ricky Ricardo, right? Sure. How many quotes? There's so many quotes from there, I'm sure. But the one they're pointing out here is, yeah. Lucy, you got some splaining to do. Oh my God. Yeah. yeah. Right, yeah. You got some splaining. <laughs> I say, yeah. We all use it for not just talking about Lucy. It's anytime somebody yeah. has messed up and they want to know the explanation of what's going on. I've said it to my kids. <laughs> yeah. yeah, of course. <laughs> yes, you got some splaining to do. And they look at me like, what? Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's often quoted and attributed to Ricky Ricardo. Yeah. That literal thing thing was never actually said. He often says Lucy should splain. Uh, he said, splain that if you can. But all those kind of have evolved into kind of lumping together the entire Ricky Ricardo kind of library of things he says. You know what's weird about this is I could totally picture visually in my head him saying it. See him saying this. You know? Yep. <laughs> right. I know it's wrong. Nope, never actually. But it's still, even knowing it's wrong, it's still- well, like George said, he it. said all those words individually, but never together. Yeah. Like <laughs> actually, it's funny you bring that up because the, the next one, which is another same kind of thing, which is on the Honeymooners, Ralph Cramden, right? Oh, yeah. Bang, zoom straight to the moon. Yeah. One of these days, Alice. A- everyone says that one. <laughs> but it turns out it's another case of, he did say those things just never together. Ah. Uh, he said, bang, zoom. And then the other time says, to the moon, Alice. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But okay. somehow yeah, I've that seen got that. mashed into- a single quote, even though he's never said that as at one time. Mm. Huh. Yep. Man. I mean, you know, a lot of those old, maybe it's because they're so old, we misremember them a little bit more as time goes on. Dragnet is another classic example. Oh, oh. that's a great show. I love that I show. I was watching Dragnet last night, believe it right. or not. Really? I love that show. Yeah. My dad loved that show. And so you probably think that Joe Friday said just the facts, yeah, man. Of course. Facts, man. Yeah, he absolutely did. Yeah, from right? that show you were watching. He always that. says that. Yeah, well, so apparently he didn't. Really? Not really. He said, <laughs> all we want are the facts, ma'am. Yeah, he said plenty of combinations of that to the point where it's like he had to have said at one point just the facts, ma'am. I would ma'am. think so, but I guess not. I mean, 
I'm sure uh, people did the research on this. <laughs> well, they yeah. they did the research on it, but even when they did the Dragnet reboot film with Dan Aykroyd, yeah. Yeah. Dan Aykroyd uses the incorrect line of just the facts, ma'am, in the oh, reboot. Geez. Oh, to further confuse your memory. <laughs> right. It did happen exactly. at one point. <laughs> That's, there's a lot of classic TV. I know we're talking about some older stuff, but Star Trek is, yeah. it, it, we actually have several from well, there. It's probably got the most. It's so easy yeah. to quote. So the number one, um, out of number one, it's right at the top at least, beam me up, Scotty. Never actually said. Yep. Seriously. No one ever said, beam me up, Scotty. Really? Like Star Trekkies yep. will, we would just, our ears would grate as we were at a convention running a table and somebody would come up to us, hey, and do the finger point, beam me up, Scotty. And we were like, yeah, fuck you, Star that Trek was never trivia said. Is, it, was, it, was it was our so, thing. Oh, we yeah, were so okay. angry So is it, I mean, was anything close? The closest to- match was beam us up, Mr. Scott, which was said in the game series of Triskelion. <laughs> the animated series, they say, beam us up, Scotty, not beam me up. So at least they did that in the animated, but never, ever have they just said, beam me up, Scott. Wow. I wonder how that came about then. I mean, I guess they said close, but it's close. Yeah, it's just yeah. one of those phrases that it's it that, sounds me out better the it misquoted way than it does with I know. the actual lines that were said. Wow. It's more, more versatile. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, one of my favorite quotes though from Star Trek is, damn it, Jim, I'm a doctor, not a proctologist or whatever. Not a whatever. Yeah. <laughs> not a whatever. <laughs> oh, whatever. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Damn it, Jim, I'm a doctor, not a gutter cleaner, whatever. Yeah. But it turns out that you ever said that damn it part he just said i'm a doctor not of this right yep. and in my head though again i totally see him saying damn it jim i'm a i know well, that's his personality he's grumbly yeah. and gruff and like, damn sure. it, jim. Right. well and there's yep. other parts of star trek where he says the phrase damn it jim but it's not followed by i'm a doctor blah 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 mm-hmm. it's just damn right. it jim you're an asshole or something like that yeah <laughs> <laughs> Well, I guess it's probably like, I mean, this show did come out in the 60s and damn it, we'll get you censored. So oh, damn it. Don't say damn it. Goodness. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, that, seven words. So I, I don't remember. <laughs> and, you know, on all honesty, I mean, this one's probably a little less quotable, but it's still one of those Star Trek ones that people get wrong all the time. And it's life, Jim, but not as we know it. It even made it into a popular yeah, film Spock, song. Right? It's life, Jim, but yeah. not as we know it. Not yeah. as we know it. Not as yeah. we know it, Captain. You it, think it'd be Spock? Sounds like Spock. Yeah, right? sounds like yeah. Spock. Sounds like a Spock. But thing it's really not. There was never really a time when he said said anything like that at all yeah oh man so how about timmy's in the well from lassie of course oh yeah i said it to my dog (laughs) he's looking at me funny i'm like what timmy in the well anytime your animal comes up to you acting funky he's like what's wrong what's wrong boy timmy in the well well? asking (laughs) and it's attributed to lassie but actually lucky for timmy he never once fell down the well (laughs) oh well good for timmy (laughs) didn't happen did anybody fall down a well uh well so ironically the only character from lassie ever to fall down a well was the dog herself in season 17. Oh, jeez. <laughs> so unless the dog was like, woo, 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 if from the well, and he's letting you know that he's Lassie's like, in the well. No. I'm in the well, damn it. Come get me. With Timmy. It's not Timmy. It's me. Yeah. Beam me up, Scotty. <laughs> <laughs> No, okay, I'm talking about your classic 80s shows. A team. Mm, yeah, right. I pity the Mr. fool. Mr. T. Mr. I pity T. The fool. Yeah. Baracus. I pity the fool. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Never once said. What? Never yeah. once. Mr. T said it, but in the A team. Baracus has never, never said it. Oh, yeah, Baracus. You know, you know, that makes sense. Okay, I get that. You think Mr. T, you think A team, you think I pity the fool, you put them all together in your head. Oh, yeah, I think we can be forgiven. I mean, yeah. those two are blurred. Like, being yeah, exactly. Baracus and Mr. T are the basically the same dude. Yeah. I mean, come on. I bet he had a copyright on that phrase, and if he had said it, they'd have had to pay him and extra pay money. Him. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably why it was never used. Oh, yeah. What's your prediction for the fight? Pay. Pay. No. <laughs> Pay. He, he's pretty quotable. <laughs> I mean, so what about one of the best TV series of all time, Lost in Space? Both oh, yeah. the original da-da, da-da, and da-da, the new da-da, remake da-da, da-da. that's out right now. Mm-hmm. What's the phrase that everybody knows from that one? Danger, Will Robinson. Danger, yeah, right? Danger, yeah. danger, Will Robinson. So it was actually said by the robot B9. He only said it once in the episode The Deadliest of Species, but it's become the definitive line of the series that we think was said in every single episode. And it really was. He said it once? One time. What? How does yeah. that become so like emblematic of that show and only ever happened one time? I mean, maybe it's just because it's so you could use it so easily and projects in trouble. You're like, oh, danger, Will Robinson. I mean, you just, yeah. it's easy to throw into things. And B9 know. is basically the burglar alarm. He does alert them when things happen. Sure. Yes. He doesn't yeah. say that same quote all the time, I guess. So danger, I can see why. Danger, Will well, Robinson. He, and yeah. he'll Morphed say things in. like danger, danger, danger. He'll right. say that. Yeah. Right. Like, danger, Will Kill, Robinson. Crush, destroy. You know, I remember that right. one too. But yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> <laughs> it just goes to show you that, you know, you think something was said a billion times or said in a certain way and memory is fallible, but apparently facts aren't. <laughs> I'm not a scientist or a physicist, Mr. Spock. I'm a surgeon, not a psychiatrist. I'm a doctor, 
not an engineer. No, I'm a doctor, not a mechanic. I'm not a magician, Spock. Just an old country doctor. I'm a doctor, not a bricklayer. I'm a doctor, not a coal miner. What am I, a doctor or a moon shuttle conductor? If there was anything in this show you'd like to learn more about, the show notes which accompany each episode are full of links to click and explore. Catch up on past episodes and get pinged every time a new one's released by subscribing wherever you listen to podcasts. And you know, iTunes reviews help more than you know, so if you haven't yet, please rate and review us in the iTunes app. And if you have a friend who isn't yet listening, why not? Tell them about us, they'll thank you later. You're our fourth listener, and we'd love to read your emails right here on the show, so hit us up at podcast at genxgrownup.com. And finally, Gen X Grown Up is more than just this podcast. Our YouTube channel has hundreds of videos ready for you to enjoy. Plus, you can find our entire body of work on genxgrownup.com. I'm sure we haven't touched on every single misquote from all of Gen X pop culture, oh, but we hit on quite a few. I mean, we went through and deleted some that were like, that's way too nitpicky or that's too right. esoteric. <laughs> there are a lot of them, though. If you think of some that we missed, you should hit us up and, uh, via email and let us know. Before we leave the show, though, I absolutely love to take a moment here at the end to express our gratitude for the folks who support us financially over on Patreon. You know these folks who put a buck or two out of their pocket every day, help us out supporting what we do here on the podcast over over on the website and on YouTube. Talking about you, Dana, Davis, T2, Marcus, Levi, Mike C, Mark, Mike R, Tony, Stu Monkey, Steen, Arlem, Chad, Thomas, Ben, Blasted or Stash it, Greg L, Slomo, John with an H, Adam, Agile, Chet, Stubaka, Dan, and Greg Z. It took me two breaths, unfortunately. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> but what a treat. We're so grateful for all of you. If you are not yet a supporter over on Patreon and would like to become one, George, tell the fourth listeners how easy it is. Absolutely. You're not going to misquote this. All you have to do is go to <laughs> patreon.com slash Gen X Grown Up. Click a little button. Decide how much you would like to donate to help us keep the lights on here at Gen X Grown Up. One dollar gets you our well-deserved thanks. A couple more dollars get you some bonus content. Mm -hmm. And a few more dollars over that even get you some cool swag yeah, so that you can only get, get one from Gen X Grown Up. We would love if you would join us. We're grateful if you do. If you don't, we still love you for listening. We, of course, will be back in two weeks with another Backtrack, but next week with a regular edition of our show. Until then, I'm John. George, thank you so much for being here. Yes, sir. Mo, you know, I appreciate you always fun man fourth listeners we appreciate you though most of all and we'll talk to you next time bye bye see you guys take care everybody no life no fun don't you know that you're a grown up Gen X grown up is a member of the evergreen podcast family learn more at evergreenpodcasts.com we're also an affiliate of the geeks worldwide radio network you can check them out at the gww.com basically life sucks as a grown up they're all iconic quotes. Let me start again. They're all iconic. <laughs> what? <laughs> I can tell you to do my mouth. Okay. All right. Um, they're all iconic quotes from our Gen X. Uh, see, you guys get me messed up now. <laughs> Stop laughing at me. <laughs> Stop laughing. Stop laughing. laughing at me. All right, here we go. <clears throat> Well, and at what point is this going to wear tiresome for That's the That's what I was thinking, too. Yeah. At, at about 35 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> we got 10 minutes. We better get yeah. this shit knocked out. I'm Ken Harbaugh, host of Warriors in Their Own Words, a podcast that presents the unvarnished, unsanitized truth of what we have asked of those who defend this nation. As a country, we need these stories more than ever. Stories from Americans who have borne the battle, including 30-year-old remastered interviews with veterans from World War I recounting their time in the trenches of Europe, and with veterans from World War II, Korea, Vietnam, and from our most recent conflicts in Iraq, Afghanistan, and other battlefields Americans may never have heard of. Hear their stories by listening to Warriors in Their Own Words wherever you find podcasts.